In this lesson, we'll discuss the quantum mechanical model of the atom. This is our current model of the atom. You can also refer to the quantum mechanical model of the atom as the electron cloud model, pictured here. Most of the ideas in the quantum mechanical model come from Erwin Schrödinger. Schrödinger described electrons as waves. This is different than the Bohr model, where the electron was treated as a particle. Here is a brief summary as to how we came to treat electrons as waves. Albert Einstein proposed that light has a dual nature, that it can behave like both a particle and a wave. The wave characteristics were well accepted, but the particle characteristics were what Einstein proposed. That led Louis de Broglie to propose that matter could have a dual nature, behave like both a particle and a wave. The particle characteristics were well accepted, and it's the wave characteristics of matter, in particular the electron, that are part of our quantum mechanical model. Think about treating electrons as waves, like these standing waves. Only certain waves can be observed for the electron. In the quantum mechanical model of the atom, electron energies are still quantized, just like in the Bohr model, and they are precisely defined. However, instead of the orbit in the Bohr model, we have in the quantum mechanical model the orbital. So that is because the location or position of the electron is uncertain. And we talk about uh, an orbital being a three-dimensional region of space within an atom where an electron is probably located 90% of the time. So the position of the electron is uncertain, and we can only talk about its probability of being within a certain region of space within the atom. This idea came from Werner Heisenberg. He has his Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and it states that you can't know the position and the energy of an electron simultaneously or at the same time. So there's a basic uncertainty in being able to find an electron within an atom. So he said you can only look at the probability of finding an electron within a given space within the atom. We use quantum numbers to describe the orbitals within the atoms and the electrons within the orbitals. The first three quantum numbers come from Schrodinger and describe the orbitals. And then the last number describes the uh, electrons within the orbitals. Our first quantum number is the principal quantum number. That's our energy level. The second quantum number is our angular momentum quantum number, and that's our orbital shape. The magnetic quantum number describes orbital orientation. That's our third quantum number. And our fourth quantum number is the spin quantum number. That describes the spin of the electron. We aren't going to emphasize the actual numbers here, but I do want to mention that each electron has a set of four quantum numbers that are unique to that electron. So no two electrons have the same set of four quantum numbers. These would be two electrons here at, with their set of four quantum numbers. And three out of the four are the same, but the fourth one is different, and that's what makes uh, it unique to the electron. Let's talk about these quantum numbers in more detail. First, the principal quantum number, n. This is our energy level, very similar to the Bohr model of the atom. You can have electrons that have the same n value, so they're in the same energy level, or electron shell. And the higher the number for n, the farther the electron can be from the nucleus. If you take your value for n and you square it, that will tell you how many orbitals you can have within each energy level or shell. So, for example, if you are in the first energy level, n equals 1. If you square that, 
that equals 1. And that tells you how many orbitals you can have within your energy level. And that number would be 1. The second quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number. This tells us our orbital shape. You can also refer to these as sublevels. And then each value for L will correspond to a different shape. We're not going to be very concerned about what the values are for L, um, just what the shapes are. There are four, S, P, D, and F. That's what we're going to focus on. Here's what the orbitals look like. S is a sphere shape. P is kind of a dumbbell shape, and it has two lobes is what we call them. D orbitals uh, have four lobes, most of them anyway. And F orbitals, uh, a few of them have eight lobes. They're a more complex shape. When we look at the shapes of the orbitals, we're really looking at the surface within which an electron is found instead of the electron cloud of higher probability, like here. Our value for n will tell us how many orbital shapes we can have in each energy level. So in the first energy level, we said we could have one shape. That's the S shape. In the second energy level, we can have two shapes. So we add P. In the third energy level, we can have three shapes. So we add D. And in the fourth energy level, we have four shapes. And this is where we add F. You probably noticed that in all of the energy levels we have an S-shaped orbital. So to distinguish them from one another, we put the energy level number in front of the shape. We have 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S. As the energy level increases, the electron has more energy and can travel farther away from the nucleus. So this allows for a larger sphere-shaped orbital. The 4s orbital would be larger than the 3s, the 2s, or the 1s orbital, even though they're all spherical in shape. Our third quantum number is the magnetic quantum number. And the values for m sub l will tell us how many orientations the orbitals have in three-dimensional space. If uh, an orbital has more than one orientation, all of the orbitals will be identical in energy, just differ in orientation. So the s orbitals have only one orientation, the p's have three, the d's have five, and the f's have seven orientations. Here again you can see a sphere-shaped orbital for s has only one way to be oriented in three-dimensional space if the nucleus is going to be in the center. The p orbitals have three orientations lying along the x, y, and z axes. The d's have five orientations, as you can see here. And the f's have seven orientations. In this diagram, we see the first few orbitals that are allowed for an atom. We have the nucleus in the center, and we've got the 1s, the 2s, and the 3s orbitals represented. The 3s orbital is larger than the 2s or the 1s because the electrons have more energy and they can travel farther away from the nucleus. And yes, there is overlap between the 3s and the 2s and the 1s. We also see some p orbitals, three orientations, one, two, and three. Remember, p orbitals um, are allowed in the second energy level and beyond, not the first. That's why we don't see any 1p orbitals. If we take a step back and look at an entire atom, this electron cloud model diagram is showing us where the electron probability is the highest. This is represented by the darkest regions. And finally, our fourth quantum number, the spin quantum number. It tells us the spin of an electron. If you think about um, an electron being like a tiny planet spinning on its own internal axis, you get something like clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. 
Wolfgang Pauli realized the importance of electron spin and talked about each orbital being able to hold two electrons maximum because there would only be two options for spin. And these two electrons within an orbital would have opposite spins and then they would be said to be paired. This is referred to as the Pauli exclusion principle. So to summarize, let's look at the electrons within each energy level. In the first energy level, we said we could only have one shape, and we call that the 1s orbital. Each orbital, according to the Pauli exclusion principle, can hold two electrons. So in the first energy level, only two electrons are allowed. In the second energy level, we can have two shapes, s and p, and the p orbitals have three orientations. Each orientation can hold two electrons, so 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 2 from the s orbital gives us a total of 8 in the second energy level. In the third energy level, we have the d shape with five orientations. Two electrons per orientation gives us 10 electrons, plus the 6 from the p, plus the 2 from the s, that total is 18 in the third energy level. And in the fourth energy level, we add the f, 7 orientations, 2 electrons per orientation for 14 electrons total, plus the 10 from the d, the 6 from the p, and the 2 from the s, that total is 32 in the fourth energy level, and so on. So in this lesson, we've talked about the quantum mechanical model of the atom, how in that model we treat the electron as a wave, that the energy is still quantized, that the electron location is defined according to probability, and that they would be located in orbitals. Orbitals and electrons within orbitals are described using four quantum numbers, energy level, orbital shape, orbital orientation, and electron spin.